think she's claiming there's no sacrificing and not having something valuable in order to get something more important is a virtue that not a lot of people are willing to commit to unless they are certain of the results. Unfortunately, Nigerians have been used to failed promises by their leaders and with the removal of fuel subsidy and recent announcement by the president, a lot of people are skeptical of the feasibility of the plans of the government and if this sacrifice will in fact be worth it. So tonight we're asking, what will sacrifice for country look and mean to you as a Nigerian? Now please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wisho Africa 1 with the hashtag Wisho. All right, so this conversation actually started up yesterday. So mm -hmm. let me just quickly run through a background, right? We mm -hmm. have discussed the presidential speech, the signing of the, what's it called, mm -hmm. the student loan, mm -hmm. and also the signing of the electricity um, bill as well, mm -hmm. right? So for us, um, I mean, Diola and Noma, they rightly put it around, you know, um, Noma harped on exemplary leadership, right? Mm -hmm. It is important that if you say, Mary, I want to, I want to sacrifice. You understand? Mm. It means that eyelashes, some things, some have things to go. have to go. You understand? Not that I am seeing you eating lasagna, going on yacht holidays, and all of that, and you're telling mm. me to sacrifice. I, I'm not seeing that happening. And of course, Yola said it that I mean, the new senator has just come into power. We would see things like, okay, mm. uh, what's it called now? New cars coming, and all of those things, right? Mm. Which are like the norm that we see all the time. That's so when you're asking us to suffer, right? When you're asking us to sacrifice, when you're asking us to hold on to that, that Nigerians are already used to mm. sacrificing, we're already used to suppressing what it is that we truly want, just mm -hmm. because, okay, for the grace of God. Like, so what would, what would be different this time around? And what, what exactly would be what to look out for? And that's what really brought mm. about this conversation. It's more to speak to our leaders, right? Mm -hmm. If you say... I should sacrifice. This is what I want to see. Do you understand? This is all my, what my own definition of sacrifice is. Mm -hmm. So to that note, that's why we're having this conversation. And let me come to you, Isi. Right? As a Nigerian, what will sacrifice you know, mean to you when you say that, okay, they say we should sacrifice. This is my own definition of sacrifice. What would it mean to you? Then I'll come back to the studio. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice to me from what we have um, encountered in Nigeria from time past to what we have gone through as a nation and as individuals in Nigeria. It means, I don't want to use the word suffering, but I, I have to say it again because it's like a cliche, but that's the, that's the actual truth. It is more, um, it is more suffering and smiling for Nigerians, basically. And that's what it will mean for me. I actually hit an all-time high when we actually had the um, financial crunch last year. And I I don't want to have to go through that process ever again. But with this, we have had to go through too many challenges time and time again. Let's look at it from when we had the SAP our parents had to go through uh, the uh, structural adjustment program. They turned, They wanted to sacrifice. They wanted to make that change. They wanted to, you know, um, look forward to having a difference in the future for their generation, for their children's children, like the quote we have today says. But have they been able to, were they able to achieve this? I don't think so. So again, sacrifice for me, needs to be defined. We need a situation whereby the government will come to us and tell us this is what we need to sacrifice for us to achieve a certain, um, a certain goal or a certain thing. So vision is paramount for me. Okay. If I have a clear cut definition of where we're going to, what we are sacrificing for, and how long we are supposed to sacrifice, this uh, make the sacrifice basically for 
I would be able to say, okay, yes, I would be able, I would be willing to go through that process. But where I do not have a clear cut vision of where we are going to as a nation, and there is a, to an extent lack of transparency, I still have that problem of trusting the vision of the government and accepting the fact that I have to sacrifice or make that sacrifice for the country. Well put together. Let mm. me come back to you, Mary. Right. Um, so the president has said that for us to move on as a country, everybody, I mean, we're all on this same page on the subsidy issue and mm -hmm. all of that. So it's not like we are attacking, but if you say that you want to sacrifice um you're willing to do a lot of things cut down on you know and stuff like that you know so if you have done certain things on your part what would you expect to see from the part of the government like a, a definition of of sacrifice to be honest um i don't think i i don't know if it's a good thing or not but i don't really have that much expectations from the government what I can see this bringing out is, as opposed to sacrifice, is I feel like it's going to push, I don't want to say Nigerians that we have a way of thriving, coping, coping in, in that suffering. Mm. We, I mean, we always say suffering and smiling. So I think what this would bring about is, because, I mean, the rise in price of things, is going to bring about people now being deliberate about entrepreneurship, being deliberate about different sources of income, which is already existing. But I believe that as a people, we will double up the hustle. And as for the government, I feel like it's, it's definitely unfair that it doesn't feel like they feel the pinch and we, the masses, have to suffer for their so-called sacrifice. But I think everybody would feel it. And, and I think even them to an extent will cut down a little bit. I'm hoping maybe they won't. Well, but you I expect. I, okay, I expect that they would cut down. It might not be as significant as we would want it to be. But I think that we will thrive regardless. regardless even mean? better in this situation i don't know i'm just being so you're still the two it. nigerian spirits okay yes. you know what let's take a break right when we come back from the break i'll hear uti's thought and i'll also open our phone right? stay with us all right thanks for staying with us now if you just tuned in is our ladies night out and we're discussing the topic what will sacrifice for nigeria mean to you as a Nigerian. And let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the red one eight zero three four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Weisho after one with the hashtag Weisho. Now, our phone line is now open. Remember the rules. Turn off the volume. Whatever device it is that you're watching us from, turn it off so we can hear ourselves. And the number to call is 0702500749. Right, so Uti, let me come to you, right? Um, I think... You, you kind of like understand the summary of a lot of things that is going on. And I think, you know, background, we've, have, we've had conversations where you say that you see where the, the direction of the new leadership is going and you see that it's going to truly change a lot of things, right, from what we used to know. Mm -hmm. So exactly what, I mean, when the president talked about sacrificing and all of that, that we must all, you know, just bear the pain for now, right? Yes, it's a good thing. We are all ready to do that. But to you, what would what would it look like? Right? If you say you were in front of Bola Metinuguna, President Bola Metinuguna, and you wanted to talk to him, to tell him this is exactly what I think that it should reflect, right? I mean, put in a bit of your communication standpoint, right? What would that language look like in terms of body language, everything, all the languages, you know, communicating to us that, they understand sacrifice and we also understand that they understand it, that we're, what we are going to. Oh, I waited till it was my turn to ask the question yes, around the VP, of, the VP of witchcraft and propaganda. <laughs> but okay, <laughs> if we're going to go that way. Um, the truth is, we talk about Nigerians being resilient, but 
Nigerians are synonymous with sacrifice. Mm -hmm. The average Nigerian makes sacrifices every day. We've, mm -hmm. we've lived our lives sacrificing one thing for the other. So I've sacrificed my money to ensure that my child has a good education. When everywhere else or in most places, education is free, at least up to the primary or secondary level. I've sacrificed my money to um, power my home, to power my business. I've sacrificed my time in traffic due to bad roads, due to, I mean, my health. Nigerians, are, our lives are synonymous with sacrifice, right? This situation that we find ourselves in, at one point, the dollar and the naira were trading at almost one-to-one -one at some point. From what we remember in recent times, the dollar started from about 170, 150, 170, yeah, okay. and now we're at circa 700 and 750, something. 750. So our lives are synonymous with sacrifice. These sacrifices that we make technically are due to the decisions of a few. Issy mentioned structural adjustment program. That particular program change the trajectory of my family's life, right? So our, our, we are synonymous with sacrifice. Now we have come to what I like to think is a crossroads. And in that crossroads, tough decisions are being made. And most Nigerians understand that these decisions have to be made. Something that began somewhat temporarily, has lasted over the years, has left us impoverished, has left us with pretty much a singular economy focused on one product. So if I come to today and I'm being asked to sacrifice, it must touch everybody There's now, more to right? It must touch everybody now. So the fact is, I hear the president when he says we must sacrifice. Where I want to see something different and I want to see change is I want to see sacrifice from the leaders. This is how you show your leadership. This is how you show, this is in fact how you get loyal followers because you are leading by example. So if we are going to sacrifice, then let us see the sacrifice across board. Now, it may be easy to actually say cut salaries, but I think that cutting salaries is PR. It's, the least of our it's, it's, not, it's not a drop in the ocean. There are severe, severe leakages right across our systems. But let's not even talk about leakages because leakages are things that maybe you cannot see. You know, I can imply that you are inefficient, but I really have no proof. So let me not even talk about the ones we can't see. But let's talk about the duplicity and duplicated efforts that we have in the government. I'll just take one example. Mm -hmm. We have EFCC. We have ICPC. GFS. We have NFIU. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's one more. All around yeah, financial yeah. crime. Meanwhile, financial crime is thriving. <laughs> Today, if I transfer money to you as a fraudster, even with knowing your BVN and all that, that money is gone. Right. So the truth is, all of these, ICPC? I mentioned ICPC, okay. I mentioned EFCC, ICPC, NFIU, there's one more I'm trying to remember, but it will come to me. Now, all mm -hmm. of these people around financial crimes, financial crimes have not stopped. In fact, that's there's more additional creativity yes. to it, right? You still have the police also mm -hmm. who are supposed to investigate crime, but then you have all these other guys around financial crime. You have federal road safety, you have VIO in Lagos. Last you have all, all of these people, again, Last around time. vehicles, roads, and all. So you can already see, let's not even start the argument between states and federal. You can see places where money doesn't need to be spent. Now, shall we talk about the ministries that don't need to exist? The one that has been trending lately um, around the CBN governor, the Ministry of Humanitarian, is it Humanitarian Affairs? Yes. Yeah. We have a, a, the current SGF was Minister of Special Duties, again, what they do there. So 
I mean, What's the truth. Let's not divert, but I mean, let's not digress. <laughs> but you see, all of these things, right? We've come to a place now where there is zero trust. We've come to a place now where our leaders are going to have to take not leaps, mammoth steps mm. to get us to believe that they see where we're coming from. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me take a caller. We apologize. I think people have been calling, but I wanted you to learn that point. Loma from Abia State, you're live. Loma, you're live. Go ahead, please. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters in the house. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Um, just what I really want to say is that, uh, yeah, uh, why must I sacrifice? Eh? You know? Thank you. Eh? Every now and then, our leaders will tell us to sacrifice. Every now and then, will I kill myself in sacrificing for Nigeria? Will I kill myself in sacrificing? They will just, see, let me just tell you, the problem we are having in this country eh, is that our leaders, they are not filled with human kindness. You cannot tell me that you tell me to continue to sacrifice mm -hmm. when you did not hurriedly put in palliative measures in place, when you did not fix our refineries, and you decided to make... Come to my are here and see how things have skyrocketed. People are suffering. Eh? People are uh, pulling through. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you see what is happening in this area, you know that this particular administration, we are from Fripan to Fire at this table. We are from Fripan to Fire. So why uh, don't you don't tell me to sacrifice when you people are the helps of the Lord, fire, destroyed everything, and you're not telling me to continue to sacrifice for Nigeria, I cannot be sacrificing again. It is high time they know that what they are doing to Nigeria is absolutely they are now wicked to Nigeria. Let them turn a new leaf and stop being wickeding the Nigerian people because we have sacrificed a lot. Let Thank them you. do the right thing. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Uh, don't, don't, don't agitate the people by saying that we're jumping from fire to fire. They are barely like how many days in office? Mm. So let's calm down. Let's, I know we are upset, and I see this, and this is what I say to our leaders, that the, 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 when you see a child raising tantrum, right, the wisdom will tell you that this is coming from something. It's really like a baby. Mm. You go and check diaper. You will check hunger. What is happening? You check mm. a lot of things. Mm. There's some time they have cramp in their tummy. That, yeah. I mean, I, I had my, my son. I, we went to Dubai. It, was, it, it, it looked like I stole a child. Mm. It's not because that... <laughs> But we kind of like look alike. Mm. You would think I actually stole a child, but he was really suffering from a very, very terrible mm. colic, colic, right? I mean, so when, when you see Nigerians agitated as a leader and now like lashing out and ex like exploding, mm. don't take it like they just are attacking or antagonizing your government. No, mm. they have every right. You mm. know, like you rightly put, everybody has said it. The, the, the background of Nigeria is we live, we breathe. We breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, and you that's know? really what it is. The the fact that again, remember when the subsidy in the speech, it was like it's gone, right? The idea was, if that had been followed by, here's how we're going to, Thank right? You. And understanding that certain um, parts of society need help to adjust. And if you come and you say, you know what, we're going to make this place more efficient or we're going to shut yes, this down how? and we're going to do this, right? And because of that, we might be able to give certain people um, certain support because we all know that we can't afford the subsidy. So it wasn't really about the subsidy going or staying. It was the how. It's the how. Remember you talked about the pulling of the Yes. Team. Let me come back to you, Isi. I mean, <laughs> I need us to like prefer solutions, right? Um, like yesterday, Jola talked about, can we not see this year them buying cars? Me, I'm even saying that you can buy cars, but patronize our local car people so that we know that the money is within our system. There's a guy in Ibadan that has done solar cars. I saw it, I sent it to the group, right? You saw the video I just shared in the group. A guy has converted a generator. Mm. to gas generator. So instead of using petrol, you have gas. So I mean, like, if we have 
brilliant minds like this, the only sensible thing a government should be thinking is how can I convert those brains into solving real solutions that we have in our country. So we're not 100% dependent on oil. For you're me, even, you're even going far. It's too far. <laughs> you're going far because those are long-term solutions. What we need now is, look, we are spending money today. Mm. You need to shut that tap. You need, need to cut it's just it. like when you budget, you, you, you look at your needs and your wants. And you yes. cut out your wants. No more, no more blood so, brain. You're not... <laughs> <laughs> she went there, though. I went there. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, that, no that, more lashes. That's, May I want that's, to hear your thoughts? Me, I'll come back to that's you. me personally. That's not Nigeria. Wait, wait, but I want, to, I want to ask you a question. So how do you... When you get to that point where you look at your financials and you see that you know, it's not adding up, how do you adjust? Do you cut do you, down now? Do you cut down or you look at other streams of income? How do you do yours? Let me tell you something. You see this hair I'm carrying? Mm -hmm. Some people can carry it for two weeks, which is fine. I would pay the extra amount and I would maintain the hair well and carry it for four weeks. Mm -hmm. That's my own way because I don't want to cut down. The other day I was talking to my colleague at work and I was like, oh, how do you wash your face with your lashes? She said, yeah, she just enters under the shower and she just, you know, I said, eh. I said, okay, the amount I'm spending on my lashes, I wash half of my face first and half of the other half first. I go to the gym every day. That's my own way of cutting down. Because I know that, oh, I, I might not be able to afford this thing like every that. Two weeks. So I want to do it well and be able to manage it I'm well. Every day I'm applying so. mousse as if you, I might as well just sleep without a bonnet. Oh, you know what? I got it. Um, if it's not there, it's not there. I don't make it. No. So we'll try. I cut my hair. I bought wigs. Have you, have you seen any new one? After that first phase, mm -hmm. we go around it again. See, you can do side parts. You can do... So I'm about making it work because, to be honest, cutting down is, is hard. But sometimes when push comes to shove, of course I will cut down. There was a time I didn't have a job. Was I fixing lashes? Often. No. Once in a while, small money enters my car, I can't do it. But you learn to survive without it. It's not a, it's when it becomes a do or die affair. So, I mean, and I now look for ways to thrive. Oh, okay, your expense has, you know, gone Go higher. Now. What can we do? Absolutely. How can we make money to afford this, this new style. situation? Okay, let me come back to you, Isi. I want to hear your thoughts, you know. How would you, you know, sacrifice personally? Pardon me? Yes. How would you sacrifice personally, like, if you had an opportunity to, like, you know, say, okay, you are evaluating your financial status and you want to sacrifice, what would that look like for you? And first, first things first, I'm, I'm quite realistic. I will cut my cost. It's opportunity cost. What is important and what is not important. First things first, I will cut my cost. Then, I would now look at other streams of income to try to you know, come bounce back. I wouldn't look at it from the perspective of having to um, manage the situation based on what has been given to me. I would look for other ways to buttress what I already have and move on from there. For example, I have, let's say, um, I have fuel in my car. Okay? I have fuel in my car. And where I used to go to for um, say, for example, for two naira, I have to go there now for four naira. What do you expect me to do? First things first, I will cut my cost, which is more important. Do I have to go to this place that is costing me four naira? Should I, should I decide to go to that place that is costing me four naira? My, my um, expense before was to go to Lagos Island, go to all the mile 12 to buy my to buy my things for the house and do my grocery shopping but these days what do i do i stick to within my my um, environment because i can't afford to spend that amount to go and buy something from lagos island or or um or tejo show market because 
I find myself spending much more. So okay. personally, Cut I down. think that is what I would I like, do. I like what you said about cut down. But let's quickly take comments from our listeners, and I'll come to you, Uti, for your final thoughts. It is very difficult to talk about sacrifice in Nigerian situation today because as Nigerians, we have all sacrificed enough in Nigeria. Where have we not sacrificed in Nigeria? Is, is it bad government we experience daily, lack of everything that could give meaning and sense of dignity to Nigerians? We have suffered enough in Nigeria. If Nigeria were to be like other countries in the world, nobody would be standing somewhere telling us to sacrifice then. They would have been, you know, oh wow, this is strong. What uh, have we enjoyed in this country as Nigerians except those very few um few um in in power those in power should begin to sacrifice now because we are tired of sacrificing do we have a caller okay go ahead please do they want to kill us or no they don't plan to spell it um we have a caller you're live i didn't get your name are you there you're live Yes, go ahead, quickly. I'll have to contribute what you're saying. Um, oh. If I were, if I were to uh, talk to you people about sacrifice, um, I would first of all say, I mean, I say that I believe that he has his uh, family as well, and he's not, um, he's not his friend, I believe he has his family to us, he's done well. But I would say to me, it's not sacrifice that, uh, Mr. President, I would support your great decision for our country, Nigeria. However, I would like to start by taxing payment tax or packages for our public officials. It is painful to hear how they take a huge income, whereas the people they are serving are told to readjust. Okay. Thank you. I, I, I caught a little bit. I don't think mm -hmm. about tasking, um, tasking the government officials and all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's take more comments quickly. Okay. Who is there? Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. What will sacrifice for Nigeria mean to Nigerians? Sacrifice is very good. Only if good things will come out of it. My dear beautiful sister, Isi, made mention of the definition of sacrifice which is suffering and smiling the duration of the suffering matters it has to be the type that someone can endure and not the one that can torment you at the end my dear beautiful sister mary said that our suffering has to be the type that we can cope which i agree because it is very key the, this oil subsidy removal should not be the type that will make us begin to regret why we are nigerians my name is daniel Iloway's regular fan um, okay, so do I have I Easy, are you there? Uh, yes, please, I am. Go ahead. Um, okay, it says, Good evening, ladies. For me, the question should be what are the people at the helm of affairs sacrificing for the good of our country? The everyday Nigerians have been sacrificing forever. They can start by reducing their take-home benefits, medical jamboree, their uh, children's schooling in here, eat, et cetera, basically. And this is from Mabel from Sue Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mabel. Um, so this one says, good evening, my beautiful sisters on Waste Show. Please, what other sacrifice does our government want us to make for Nigeria? Is the sufferings that we go through every day in Nigeria not enough sacrifice? What are the sacrifices that politicians make, or is it only the poor that's meant to make these sacrifices? Our political class are not sincere to the masses. That's the fact, and they know it. There's no name to that one. All right, so Uti, you want to wrap up quickly in a minute? Well, I think we've said it all, really. The, 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 our leaders just need to show us, right? The concept of servant leadership is, has been missing from what we see in our leaders. Typically, these decisions are being made. We don't agree with them. We don't feel the positive impact of those decisions. At this time, to build trust, to engender loyalty and you know, that devotion that you should have from your followers, our leaders really need to look at Absolutely. how they're going to show us mm -hmm. that they are also making sacrifices and that they're leading in the right direction. Absolutely. They are now making the types of decisions that Absolutely. will serve 
every Nigerian and not just a particular note, class. Thank you so much, ladies. We had a fantastic conversation. Um, before we go, ensure you follow us across social media that way show Africa you can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow. There was something Mary said about management. You know that in this country, we're not savvy manage anything. <laughs> they need to learn that. It's very, very important. Absolutely. Because even the one way we get, maybe we will maintain our Yeah. Team. All right, more if you efficient. missed our quote for today, let's see it again. It says, let us sacrifice our today so that our children can have a better tomorrow. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.